NASCAR Winston Cup race. Is 34 laps old at Watkins Glen, New York. And our overhead shots today being provided by the good people at Steel Chainsaws and Power Equipment. Some great shots coming from this beautiful area of the country. And there you can see the interval between first and second. Mark Martin just a few car lengths ahead of Rusty Wallace. The AutoZone interval leaderboard will show you that the interval between first and fifth is just a little over eight seconds. Seconds. Well, here we see Sterling Marlin, the yellow car. He's about to go a lap down. Bobby's being shown in 29th position. Dave Marcus is right behind him. Dave is the last car on the lead lap that is in, in uh, danger of going a lap down. We understand the 25 car. Oh, um, oh, yeah. Ken Schrader is in trouble with a lot of smoke coming from the left side of that machine. Yeah, it's coming out the exhaust pipe, Bob, so that's not too good. I understand that it could be a transmission problem for Ken Schrader. Well, they're looking at under the hood. One crew member looking at under the rear of the car. Of course, as we pointed out earlier, not been a good weekend for Ken Schrader and the Budweiser team. He had crashed here yesterday afternoon in practice. Had to go to a backup car and had moved back up through the field pretty good. He moved up into the top 15 at one point and now sits on two road. Like a valve problem with the smoke coming out the exhaust pipe. And Earnhardt, Earnhardt. Look at this. He's got something dragging on the right side of the car and has slowed considerably. Bruce Green from this side has. There's something you can see that's uh, flapping in the wind there on that right side. I thought I saw that earlier, right after he came out of the pits, and thought it was just a piece of uh, tape or something. And I think that's what that part is. And is he really going slower than he was? Jerry, watch the situation. That's crap you see dragging on the right side of the Goodwood Chevrolet. That's been there about 15 laps. Actually, it was here when he pitted. It was just simply a little plastic strap along the right side of the car. The problem, though, with Earnhardt is much more severe. He radioed, and he has lost second and fourth gear. He has first and third gear only, so obviously, unless they can get a caution flag and possibly get a look at the transmission, he's not going to be able to run at full speed until the next pit stop or hopefully yellow flag for the Earnhardt crew. Well, another possible setback to Dale Earnhardt's quest for eight NASCAR Winston Cup championships. Benny Parsons, you're, you're an expert on these transmissions. What kind of a problem will that pose having to, to miss a gear in shifting? Well, I don't think it's going to pose any problem except he won't be able to accelerate down the straight. He won't be able to use fourth gear. And in third gear, if that's the highest gear that he has, probably the car will run 120, 30 miles an hour maximum speed. We see Ted Musgrave just blowing by him down this, uh, going in turn one. Be careful not to over rev the engine. Exactly. That's really hard on the engine. That's what he'll do is he'll run that thing right up the red line. He's 8,800 or whatever he's running, and he's going to have to hold it there for a long time, and that's really, really a strain. Meanwhile, Ken Schrader's Budweiser Chevy is being pushed behind the wall and could be our third car out. John, is, uh, is Ken with you? Yes, he is, Bob. Ken has climbed out of the car down here on Pitt Road. And Ken, you had to go to a backup car and start from the tail in the field. You were moving to the front. What happened? We broke something real important in the motor. Coming up the backside, it just bam all of a sudden. But it broke something really important, but not a good weekend to, to be driving a Bud car. And kind of performance we had, especially at the Budweiser race. But uh, it was going forward. We were about halfway through it, only third of the way through the race. So. We were going to be somewhere, Ethan. Well, Ken Schrader's out of it for right now. They've pushed the Budweiser Chevrolet back to the garage area, and they will load it up. So he joins Hutt Strickland and Kyle Petty as officially out of the race. It continues to be Mark Martin in command of this event with Rusty Wallace right behind him. And the next car to go a lap down would be the 28th place car of Sterling Marlin. So the four cards certainly in the position to win the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship about to go a lap down. And Dale Earnhardt, who comes into this event third in the point standings, is also having problems here at Watkins Glen. We'll be back with more live coverage after these messages. Rusty Wallace. Now let's take a look at the top five in points, where they started and where they are currently running. Well, that 
that uh, Marlin is not in fifth place now. He's that he is uh, currently in 27th place and just about to be lapped. Yeah. <laughs> but he hasn't been, and it's been a couple of laps that Mark has been working on him. And, and understandably, Marlin doesn't want to go a lap. Dr. Jerry Punch, more on this. Well, now the big concern of the Goodrich Fifth is brakes. Now, we have a suspension camera on the Goodrich Chevrolet. We'll maybe be able to show you a little later on. We're going to keep an eye on that. They have told Dale Earnhardt, hey, with no second and fourth gear, you just have to keep it in third gear and ride. But you've got to be very, very careful of those brakes because you don't have second gear to slow the car down, and you're going to use those brakes up. So please be very easy on the brakes. And all you can do is ride right now with third gear only. And look at the incredible difference between this time and uh, the start of the race when he was really climbing on the binders. Yeah, we don't have near the, the red there that we saw earlier, so he is taking it easy on this brake. But he's not running near the speed that he was before either, so that would make a big difference. He's got to try to conserve everything right now, guys. You know, he's in a wounded car. He's waiting for a pit stop or something to happen. But if you push a car to turn like this, it will, it will blow up on you. So he's trying to get through. So Earnhardt back to 20th position now and continuing to lose positions, trying to baby that car as much as he possibly can. You see that shock is overworking. You know, shocks have been, become very important in NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Continue the car and the chassis of the car. Rusty still dogging the Mark Martin car. Now let's show you that graphic once again, and this time uh, it has been updated and correct. Gordon started fifth, is now third. Marlin has moved up from 32nd to 27th, but still is uh, about to lose it. Earnhardt has fallen five positions. Martin is still where he started. Now guys, look at that. Sterling Marlin yeah. has driven away from Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. Sure has. In fact, he's got Earnhardt. And Earnhardt is going to lap down. Yeah. Well, we understand that uh, Lynn left in there and went straight through and did not make it through the inner loop. But in the driver's meeting, the car that went straight through there. It's going to be a stop and go penalty unless you didn't gain anything. Right. When you come back to start finish line, if you hadn't gained anything, well then you uh, would not be penalized. You know, guys, he might have gone straight through there to let the guys behind him through cleanly. Obviously, he didn't gain anything as he's falling backwards, so maybe it's a courtesy call on his part. And pretty soon there's going to be a battle for third. Wally Dallenbach is really closing up on the DuPont Chevrolet of Jeff Gordon. They're exiting turn two, heading up through the S's. And that MBNA Pontiac is climbing right in behind Jeff Gordon, Dorsey. Yes, he is indeed. You know, Wally's been real smooth. You've got to watch him. I think guys have kind of forgotten about Wally being out there. And, uh, they're not accustomed to him right up there. He's sneaking it right up into the top three right now. Is he going to make a move there, Dorsey? Yes, he is. As he's come through here. Two road racers under braking. I raced with Wally down back a lot of times, guys. A lot of different cars and uh, you know there's no question about it he's bucking for a ride he wants to be back in this winter cup circuit full time and he'll do everything he can to win this race today he sure does so Dolan back i wonder if ray Evernham has told jeff gordon look earnhardt's having trouble sterling marlin's having trouble you've got to finish this race if you can finish this race we just might win the championship is he going racing right now Certainly, he doesn't need to take any unnecessary chances at this point with his, uh, his couple of his competitors having trouble. Sounds, we understand that the Earnhardt car has been uh, black flagged. Well, it might be for for that uh, violation over there at the interloop. It's look at Rusty Wallace drive right up on <laughs> Mark Martin. And might have tapped him just a little bit there as he came up on uh, they were Dale Earnhardt. Trying to, yeah, trying to get around the uh, Dale Earnhardt. They continue to run in the same order now. 
Mark Martin has led all but four laps of this race. And by the way, while the pit stops were being made, Jeff Gordon did have the lead. That was the first time Excuse that he led on a road course. Yeah. Sorry, Jimmy Spencer off the course down here. Backs it around, gets it back in gear. And uh, Jimmy, after another adventure, will head back out <laughs> on the track. Mr. Excitement providing a lot of excitement for people all around the course. That's at least twice that he has gotten off the racetrack. And he's with the team five. May have lost a few positions there, but he's uh, back in that general area. Yeah, I think you lost a couple of fast spots there, Bob. We're going to take a look at it and see what uh, happened again. He's already in progress. He's gotten off course, spun around, brought up a little dust. That's hard to imagine after all the rain we had here on <laughs> Friday and Saturday, but uh, nevertheless, it does bring up some, some dust right in front of Bill Elliott. Jerry has an update on Dale Earnhardt's situation. Well, apparently we're not the only ones that's had some radio communication problems down here at the far end of pit road. NASCAR just a moment ago radioed their official and said, you must tell the three car they must go through the chicane. Apparently the official misunderstood and told the crew chief you can bypass the chicane. So Earnhardt went straight through, providing you don't gain anything. He went straight through to save his brakes. When the NASCAR official from the tower saw that, he said, no, 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 you must go through the chicane. Then the official heard him on his radio and went back and said, no, guys, you have to go through the chicane. The inner loop up there, you cannot bypass. So apparently a little miscommunication, but they now have to straighten out, and Earnhardt will not be made to come on pit road. Well, of course, not going through the inner loop right there. We'll save some brakes. Let's give a call to Butch Leisinger here on the number 40 car, running in 13th position, a real true road racing veteran. He has been moving up through the field very nicely. He spun in qualifying here on Friday in the first round of qualifying. And, uh, boy, sweated it out yesterday as it rained off and on all day. Didn't know if they wanted to get a second round of qualifying. Finally, they did. He was the second round fastest qualifier and wound up starting in 21st position. So he'll be eligible for uh, the wild card of the Bush Clash then next yes, year. Yes, he will. How about that? Yes. There you see, you see the Bill Elliott, the outside pole shooter, is uh, falling back evidently. The Bush is falling in early on. It's uh, not gotten any better. Yeah, he's, uh, he's continuing to fall back. He's now in fourth to uh, make a 15th position. There's Robert Presley right there, who is in a battle not only on the racetrack, but for rookie of the year honors. He trails Ricky Craven at the moment by just three markers. So a good showing for Presley and a bad one for Ricky Craven, who changed that situation. But Craven at the moment is running 17th. John Kernan has more on Robert Presley. Well, I was talking to him this weekend along with his car owner, Leo Jackson. They came up just prior to the Brickyard 400 and testing here, brought Trans Am Road Racing Ace Jack Baldwin to help him out. And if you saw NASCAR today with Dave Despain and Alan Bestwick on ESPN2, you heard that uh, the fact that they asked Ricky Craven if he had a coach, and he said, well, once Robert Presley's out there on the track, he won't have Jack Baldwin in the car with him to help him out. But Robert said Jack helped out tremendously, and it looks like he has learned those lessons well. Indeed, Well, Sterling Marlin has lost a lap, so has Steve Grissom, so then there are now 23 cars on the lead lap, and the next car to go a lap down would be Joe Nemechek. There is Marlin in 25th position, but down a lap before we reach the halfway mark. And we can see the 43 car of Bobby Hamilton is back out there, Bob. He is about uh, 30 laps down. Martin continues to lead the Bud at the Glen by the narrowest of margins over Rusty Wallace. 